A shocking event is about to happen in the home you are currently staying in. A profound divine intervention is on the horizon for numerous households worldwide, and yours is among them. God has selected many homes, the abodes of his faithful followers, to experience a remarkable divine undertaking that will utterly astonish them. The Holy Spirit has unequivocally declared that all the chosen individuals for this extraordinary supernatural work will encounter the presence of the Almighty within their homes by the upcoming Wednesday. Can you now be a bit cautious and pay attention to these words carefully? Exercise caution, as disregarding the forthcoming words of God may result in missing out on the blessings He intends to bestow upon you through this message. Now. Let me elucidate what is poised to occur in numerous households. The Holy Spirit has distinctly revealed that two significant events are unfolding in the homes of every chosen believer. This is the divine message I received in my spirit. Beloved children of the Most High, heed my voice. By the following Tuesday, remarkable events are destined to unfold within your homes, orchestrated by the divine hand of Almighty God. As the Holy Spirit, it is my sacred responsibility to unveil the marvelous manifestations that the Lord has decreed to unfold. Let me assert this with certainty. This is not confined to your home alone. It will occur within the abodes of every believer. The omnipotent presence of God will fill the residences of His devoted followers worldwide, heralding a period of supernatural experiences and divine intervention. Let it be declared first and foremost that your home shall be blessed with divine healing, as the compassionate touch of our all-powerful Creator brings restoration to those afflicted. Prepare your hearts to witness the miraculous healing bestowed by God's loving hands upon all who are in need. Additionally, expect an overflow of spiritual gifts within your households. Prophecy, tongues, interpretations of tongues, miracles, and words of knowledge will manifest as tangible evidence of God's presence among you. Embrace His divine guidance, for it aims to uplift and strengthen each soul within your household through these supernatural blessings. Know this, dear Chosen One. God comes not with timidity or hesitation, but with boldness and assurance, ready to demonstrate His might and sovereignty. His plans are not subject to mortal limitations or doubts. Rather, they are established in His eternal wisdom and providence. Therefore, prepare yourselves to witness the unfolding of His divine will with unwavering faith and expectancy. As you anticipate these supernatural manifestations, let your hearts be filled with faith and fervent prayer. Seek the countenance of the Almighty earnestly, positioning yourselves to receive all that He is poised to bestow. In the presence of the Almighty, there is no room for doubt or fear. His power transcends human understanding, and His love surpasses all comprehension. Therefore, approach Him with boldness and confidence, knowing that He is faithful to fulfill His promises and accomplish His purposes. As you await the manifestation of God's divine will, remain steadfast in prayer and devotion. Let your faith be a beacon of light in the darkness, illuminating the path ahead and guiding you through every trial and tribulation. Remember, dear Chosen One, that you are not alone in this journey. The Almighty God, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, walks beside you, leading and guiding you every step of the way. Trust in His unfailing love and sovereignty, and rest assured that His plans for you are good and perfect. So, prepare your hearts and minds to witness the miraculous works of the Almighty. Embrace His divine will with unwavering faith and expectancy, knowing that He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. With hearts filled with faith and fervent prayer, let us eagerly anticipate the supernatural manifestations of God's power and glory. But those who diligently seek the Lord shall surely find Him and those who wait upon Him shall be renewed with strength and power. Beloved, by the next Tuesday, your homes shall be transformed by the presence and the power of the Almighty God.
divine healing shall transpire, spiritual gifts shall be ignited, and the glory of the Lord shall permeate your midst. Rejoice, for the Lord is poised to exceed your expectations, revealing himself in ways that surpass all human understanding. His presence will bring transformation, healing, and restoration to every aspect of your life. As you eagerly await the manifestation of his power, continue to seek him with all your heart, trusting in his faithfulness and sovereignty. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding and comprehension, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In the midst of uncertainty and turmoil, may you find refuge in his presence, knowing that he is with you and for you. Let his peace reign in your hearts, filling you with confidence and assurance as you await the fulfillment of his promises. As you prepare to witness the miraculous works of the Almighty, let your faith be unwavering and your expectation be steadfast. For he who has promised is faithful, and he will surely bring to pass all that he has spoken. Rejoice in anticipation of the blessings that await you. For the Lord is about to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or imagine. Indeed, the declaration of the Holy Spirit resonates deeply within the hearts of those who are attuned to his voice. It is a reminder that without the grace of God, we are nothing. And it is only through his mercy and favor that we are able to receive his guidance and revelation. As you spend your time in prayer, seeking the presence of the Almighty, he graciously imparts his wisdom and truth to you, guiding you in accordance with his divine will. The words you have shared are a testament to the power of God's Spirit working within you, leading and directing you in paths of righteousness. While the promises spoken pertain to the transformation and blessings in our current homes, it is important to also consider the eternal homes that await us as children of God. The Bible offers us glimpses of the glorious future that awaits those who have placed their faith in Jesus Christ. In John 14 verses 2 to 3, Jesus himself declares, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. These words remind us of the eternal home that awaits believers in Christ, a place of beauty, peace, and joy, prepared by the loving hand of our Savior himself. It is a home where every tear will be wiped away, every sorrow will be turned to joy, and we will dwell in the presence of God for all eternity. As we eagerly anticipate the fulfillment of God's promises in our current homes, let us also fix our eyes on the eternal home that awaits us. May the hope of our heavenly dwelling place inspire us to live with faith, courage, and perseverance as we journey through this life, knowing that our ultimate destination is secured by the blood of Jesus Christ. My chosen child, in the sacred words of John chapter 14, verses 2 to 3, I reveal to you, my love is your home, and in my love you shall find refuge. Behold, in my Father's house there are abundant dwelling places awaiting your arrival. If it were not so, would I not have told you? Indeed, I am preparing a place for you where you shall forever dwell in my presence. Fear not, dear one, for I assure you that your eternal home nestles close to my heart awaiting your arrival. This home, dear chosen one, is not constructed with human hands, but rather, it is formed by the flames of my divine love. Nestly deep within the chambers of my heart, there exists a special abode reserved solely for you, a sacred space that bears your name. In the embrace of my love, you will find solace and peace beyond measure. Every corner of your eternal home is filled with the light of my presence, casting out all darkness and fear. There, you will experience the fullness of joy and the richness of my glory, for I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So, do not be troubled by the trials and tribulations of this world, for they are but temporary. Instead, 
Fix your eyes on the eternal home that awaits you, where you will dwell in perfect communion with me for all eternity. Trust in my promise, dear one, and let the assurance of my love be your anchor in the storms of life. As you journey through this earthly realm, remember that you are not alone. I am with you every step of the way, guiding and protecting you with my unfailing love. And when the time comes for you to enter your eternal home, I will be there to welcome you with open arms, rejoicing in the eternal union of our hearts. Rest in my love, dear chosen one, and know that you are cherished beyond measure. Your eternal home awaits, and it is a place of unimaginable beauty and wonder, prepared just for you by the hand of your loving Creator. Take courage, my beloved, for I have prepared a place for you in my heavenly kingdom, where you will dwell securely for all eternity. Do not fear the unknown future, for your destiny has been ordained since before time began. As you transition from this earthly existence to the eternal realm of my presence, rest assured that I, the Lord your God, will be there to receive you with boundless love. This is the purpose for which you were created, to abide in the sanctuary of my unfailing love forevermore. Remember, dear child, as it is written in John 6 verse 37, All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. You, my precious child, are held in the eternal embrace of love shared among the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Before the world began, you were chosen to be part of our divine family in Christ. I presented you as a cherished gift to my Son, so that through his sacrifice and resurrection, he could unite with you in perfect unity. Therefore, banish any fear of rejection, for you have been eagerly anticipated throughout eternity. At this very moment, my love surrounds you, drawing you into my everlasting arms. Quiet your heart, dear one, and seek a deeper understanding of my boundless love, for as you do, my spirit will reveal the depths of my affection to you. With all my love, your heavenly Father. So, beloved child of God, having received the message from the Holy Spirit and the Word of God concerning both your earthly and eternal abodes, let us now join together in prayer. Heavenly Father, in this sacred moment of communion with you, we raise our voices in prayer, seeking your divine intervention in our lives. We approach your throne with hearts full of anticipation, knowing that you are a God who hears and answers prayers. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the promise of supernatural manifestations within our homes by the upcoming Tuesday. We are in awe of your power and sovereignty, eagerly awaiting the marvelous works you are poised to perform in our midst. As we prepare our hearts to receive your blessings, we humbly surrender ourselves to your will, placing our trust in your perfect timing and unwavering love. Lord, we come before you in prayer, seeking divine healing for every member of our households who is in need. We beseech you to extend your healing touch to those grappling with physical ailments, emotional wounds, and spiritual distress. Let your healing power flow abundantly, restoring health, wholeness, and vitality to each individual according to your divine purpose. Additionally, Heavenly Father, we implore you to pour out your Holy Spirit upon our homes, unleashing spiritual gifts such as prophecy, tongues, interpretations of tongues, miracles, and words of knowledge. Grant us the ability to operate in these gifts for mutual edification and the advancement of your kingdom. May your presence be palpable among us, guiding, empowering, and equipping us for every good deed. Lord, we humbly recognize that your divine plans encompass not only our individual households, but also extend to every home where believers reside across the globe. With one accord, we unite our hearts with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, offering prayers of unity, revival, and spiritual awakening. May your glory manifest in unprecedented ways, drawing countless souls into your kingdom and effecting transformative change for your honor and renown. 
As we eagerly anticipate the fulfillment of your promises, Heavenly Father, we dedicate ourselves to earnest prayer and unwavering faith. Grant us the grace to persevere in prayer, assured of your unwavering faithfulness to bring your word to fruition. Strengthen our faith, O Lord, and instill in us an unwavering trust in your goodness and provision, even amidst times of uncertainty. Heavenly Father, we relinquish control of our lives and our households into your tender care. May your presence abide richly within our midst, saturating every corner with your abiding peace, boundless joy, and unfailing love. Let your sovereign will be accomplished in our lives and in our homes, both now and forevermore. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. This is the word of the Lord from James 5, verse 16. So stop doubting. Prayer changes everything. Keep praying until something happens. Now, these words are very comforting, and yet it's easy to forget the sheer weight and power of these words, especially when the storms of life threaten to capsize our little boats. So you may be asking, what does it mean when we say that prayer changes everything? What does it mean when we say, stop doubting and keep praying until something happens? Today, I will talk about this powerful spiritual weapon that can make a big difference in your life. You know, talking to God is like talking to your best friend. It's that comforting voice in your ear, always there to listen, always there to guide you. What we have to remember is that prayer is a two-way street. It's not just about asking for what we want. It's also about listening, opening our hearts, and letting God speak to us. When we truly listen, we start to hear the wonderful things God wants for us. We start to hear the instruction that God gives us concerning our situations. And that's the miracle of prayer. And that's how prayer changes everything. Can you remember the time when Peter, one of Jesus' best friends, was locked up in jail? His friends were really worried and didn't know what to do. So they turned to prayer. They asked God for help. And guess what happened? An angel appeared in Peter's cell and walked him right out of there. This wasn't because his friends had a magic wand. They had something more powerful. They had prayer. And their prayer didn't just change their feelings. It brought about a real big change in the world around them. But that's not all. Even when things don't go exactly as we asked, prayer still has a big impact. It changes us from the inside. It connects us with God. It gives us peace, patience, and strength to face anything. So prayer doesn't always change the situation in the way we sometimes expect, but it always changes us, making us more like Jesus.I in the Bible. In the book of Matthew, in chapter 7, verse 7, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. This just means that when we talk to God about what we want or need, He hears us. He's ready to help us when we ask Him. The Bible tells us that prayer is powerful. It can do so much good. And in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, we are told that if we ask anything according to God's will, He listens. Isn't that great news? So when we pray, we're not just talking into thin air. We're having a chat with God, and He's ready and willing to help us. He wants to listen to us and talk with us. That's the amazing power of prayer. Now, when we say prayer changes everything, it's a big statement, isn't it? But it's true. And to understand it better, let's look at some examples. Jabez was a man in the Bible who knew all about how prayer could change everything. You can find his story in the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 4, verses 9 to 10. Now, his mother had named him Jabez because his birth had brought her great pain. But Jabez didn't want to live a life of pain and sorrow. So you know what he did? He prayed to God. He asked God to bless him, to help him, and to keep him from harm so that he would not suffer. And guess what? God answered Jabez's prayer. God gave him what he asked for. This shows how prayer can bring big changes into our lives. Prayer is truly powerful. Now let's look at a story from our own time. There was a man named Nicky Cruz. He used to be a gang leader, and his life was full of violence and crime. But one day, he met a man named David Wilkerson, a preacher who prayed for him. Nicky laughed at him at first, but David didn't give up. He believed in what it says in the book of James, chapter 5, verse 16. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. 
So David kept praying for Nikki. And you know what? Nikki's life completely changed. He left the gang and started helping other people instead. Today, he is the founder of Nikki Cruz Outreach, an evangelistic Christian ministry, and he is also the author of several Christian books. His story shows us that prayer really can change everything, but there's something we need to remember. Sometimes when we pray, it seems like God isn't answering straight away. Does that mean he's not listening? No way. God is always listening. But sometimes he wants us to keep praying, to keep asking. This is what Jesus taught us in the story of a man who went to his friend's house late at night. In the book of Luke, chapter 11, verses 5 to 10, the scripture says, Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Now, you know, sometimes we all have doubts. It's a part of being human. Even the man in the Bible whose son was not well had doubts. His story is in the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 24. He said to Jesus, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. He was honest about his doubt, but he asked Jesus to help him with it. And that's okay. We can ask God to help us when we have doubts, but how can we fight these doubts? How can we make our faith stronger? One big way is through prayer. When we talk to God and listen to Him, it can make our faith stronger. It's just like when we spend time with a good friend. The more time we spend with them, the better we get to know them, and the more we trust them. It's the same with God. The Bible tells us this in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. When we hear God's word, when we pray and listen to him, it helps us believe more. And when we believe more, it helps us to have less doubt. But what if we need wisdom to deal with our doubts? The Bible has an answer for that too. In the book of James, chapter 1, verses 5 to 6, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. So not only can prayer make our faith stronger, but it can also give us wisdom to fight our doubts. Remember, doubt is normal, but don't let it win. Keep praying, keep trusting God, and let His Word make your faith stronger. But it's important to remember that God's wisdom surpasses ours. He sees the bigger picture that we can't see. His ways and thoughts are higher than ours, as the Bible tells us in Isaiah 55, verses 8-9. to When it seems like God isn't answering our prayers, it could be for several reasons. One such reason is that we might be asking amiss or with wrong intentions. In the book of James, chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible talks about asking with wrong motives to fulfill our own selfish desires. When we pray with the intent of self-gratification or for things that do not align with God's will or His plans for us, we may find that these prayers go unanswered. Or maybe the timing isn't right yet. Or perhaps what we are asking for isn't ultimately the best for us. Or it might be that God is using the situation to grow our faith and character. God is our loving Father, and He wants the very best for us. Sometimes, this means He doesn't give us what we want when we want it. But we can always trust in His love and wisdom, knowing that He is working all things together for our good. But the Bible tells us something important about this. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, Verse 11, it says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. This means that God has a perfect time for everything. It may not be our time, but it's always the best time. This is also told in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. This tells us that even if what we're praying for seems slow in coming, we need to be patient and wait for it. And one more thing. In the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 9, it says, 
The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God's not slow. He's patient and he wants what's best for us. Now here's another interesting story from the Bible about not giving up in prayer. It's about a man named Jacob. The story is in the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verses 22 to 32. Verses 22. One night, Jacob found himself wrestling with a man until dawn. He didn't give up, even when the man put his hip out of joint. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And you know what? The man gave Jacob a new name, Israel, and he blessed him there. Jacob didn't give up. He kept wrestling until he got his blessing. That's a lot like prayer. Sometimes we have to keep praying, keep wrestling with our worries and doubts until we get our blessing. We have to be patient and persistent. And when we do that, just like Jacob, we'll see that prayer can bring blessings and growth in our lives. So keep praying until it happens. Today, we've learned that prayer is like talking and listening to God. It's a way we can ask for help, thank Him for His blessings, and even tell Him about our doubts and fears. And we've seen how powerful it can be for Jabez in the Bible to Nikki Cruz in our own time. We've seen how prayer can really change things, and I'm sure some of us have our own testimonies as well. Thought we've also learned that it's okay to have doubts. Doubting is just a part of being human, but we can't let doubt win. We can pray about our doubts and ask God to help us with them. And we can trust in His Word, which tells us that faith comes from hearing His Word. But perhaps one of the biggest things we've learned is that we need to be patient and keep praying. Like Jacob in the Bible, we need to be persistent. And we need to remember that God's timing is the best timing. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, to pray without ceasing. That means we should always be praying, always be talking and listening to God. And in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, it says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That peace, that sense of calm and well-being that comes from knowing that God is with us, that's what prayer can bring. So I encourage all of us to commit to praying without ceasing. Make prayer a part of your daily routine. Let's be like Jacob, like Jabez, like David Wilkerson who kept praying for Nikki Cruz. Let's keep praying, no matter what, because prayer can change everything. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our faithful and loving God. Father, you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You are my creator and my counselor, guiding me daily to make wise decisions. Gracious God, you are my comforter in sorrow, pain, and distress. I come before you today with a humble and open heart. I thank you for your grace, I thank you for your love, and for the gift of life. Lord, I am grateful that you're always there for me in the good times and the bad. Lord, I pray for a shift in my life and circumstances. I ask that you will unlock doors of opportunities for me, bring healing to my body, and bring about change in my life. Forgive me, Lord, for the times that I let doubts creep in. Lord, I rebuke every temptation to doubt in the name of Jesus. I pray for faith that moves mountains, for the strength to stop doubting, and to keep praying until it happens in the name of Jesus. I declare victory over fear and doubt. I declare that I will not be moved by what I see or hear, but by the Word of God, which is the truth eternal and unchanging. Lord, I ask for you to guide my thoughts so that they may align with your will. May you touch my heart that it may be full of love, courage, and forgiveness. Lord, May you touch my spirit that I may be filled with your peace. Father, I recognize that I need your guidance every step of the way. Help me to be patient, to wait on your perfect timing. I thank you, Lord, that you will work all things together for my good. I rebuke the spirit of impatience or frustration in the name of Jesus. I declare that I will pray without ceasing. Lord, help me to keep trusting and keep believing. Help me to continue praying until my change comes. For I know that you are a faithful God who never fails. I plead the blood of Jesus over my life and over the lives of my loved ones, that it may be a testament to your glory. May my words and actions reflect your love and grace. 
I rebuke any form of negativity or unkindness in my life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for the power of prayer, for the privilege of coming to you, for the assurance that you hear me. Thank you for your faithfulness, for your never-ending love and grace. Lord, I pray for a breakthrough, for a turnaround, and for an overflow of your blessings in my life. I know it's not by my power nor by my might, but by your Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for reminding me that I should keep praying until it happens. Lord, I want my prayers to reflect your righteousness. Teach me to pray for things that align with your plans and your purposes. Guide my words and thoughts so that I don't ask out of selfish desires, but in a way that seeks to honor you and further your kingdom. Lord, just as I pray for change in my own life, I pray for change in the lives of my loved ones. As I place them before you, Lord, may they come to know and experience your love and grace in a profound and personal way. Where there is pain or sickness, may you bring healing. Where there is confusion, may you bring clarity. Where there is unrest and instability, may you bring peace. And where there is doubt, may you instill faith. Lord, I rebuke any negative influence and every power of darkness over our lives and our relationships in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the assurance that as I make my request known to you, you are listening. I thank you, Lord, for answering my prayers in the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Have you ever felt the tranquility of early morning when the world is hushed and the day brims with potential? This moment, so serene and pregnant with promise, resembles commencing our day with prayer. Just as the dawn's light begins to blanket the sky, dispelling darkness, initiating our day with God illuminates our path, guiding us through whatever lies ahead. Prioritizing prayer as the first action of our day isn't just about the words we utter. It's about forging a connection with our Creator. It's about offering our time, thoughts, and hearts to Him before anything else. Today, we delve into the significance of making prayer the inaugural act of our day, exploring how this simple yet profound practice can influence the course of our day, impact our mood, and shape our interactions with others. When we start our day with prayer, we declare to God, you are the most important part of my day. This act of prioritizing God sets the tone for everything that follows, affirming our faith and trust in Him. It's a practice that not only strengthens our faith, but also enriches our daily lives, infusing them with peace, joy, and purpose. Commencing each morning with conversation with God is more than just a ritual. It's a lifeline, anchoring our souls in the certainty of His love and promises. It establishes a precedent for the rest of the day, offering a perspective aligned with God's will and brimming with hope. Morning prayer isn't merely a routine. It's an act of faith, believing that God hears us, cares for us, and is actively involved in our lives. It's an expression of our dependence on Him, acknowledging that we need His wisdom and strength to navigate the day. Moreover, starting our day with God empowers us to embody the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These qualities become more evident in our lives when we spend time with God each morning, enriching our relationships and allowing us to become vessels of His love. Morning prayer equips us with wisdom for the day's decisions, guiding us in both major choices and everyday matters. It sets a rhythm of communion with God that can continue throughout the day, transforming ordinary moments into opportunities to experience His presence and work in our lives. The practice of starting our day with God through prayer is a journey of faith, trust, and surrender. It promises not just a good day, but a God-centered life, rich in peace, purpose, and joy. Let's commit to making prayer the first action of our day, inviting God's presence into every moment and allowing His will to shape our lives. Morning prayer reminds us that true peace is found in the presence of God. Let us, therefore, cherish these early moments with God, allowing His peace to fill us and flow through us. May it be a guiding light throughout our day, a reminder of God's constant presence and unwavering love. In doing so, we not only enrich our own lives, but also extend this peace to those around us, creating ripples of God's love in a world in desperate need of His peace. Embarking on each new day with morning prayer not only immerses us in peace, but also fortifies us with a strength that is not our own. This strength, bestowed upon us by the Almighty, is a testament to the power that lies in beginning our day rooted in divine communion. 
It is a strength that surpasses physical capabilities, nurturing our inner resilience and empowering us to face life's challenges with courage and determination. This divine strength is a promise from God to those who seek Him, as vividly captured in Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Morning prayer is our act of waiting on the Lord, of dedicating the first fruits of our day to Him. And in return, He renews our strength, equipping us to soar above the trials and tribulations of life. The strength we gain from starting our day in God's presence goes beyond mere endurance. It transforms our perspective on adversity. Challenges become opportunities to witness God's power at work in our lives. Trials become platforms for His grace to be displayed, and weaknesses become conduits for His strength to be perfected. This strength enables us to persevere with joy, knowing that our victory is secured in Christ. Furthermore, the strength derived from morning prayer infuses our faith with vitality. It anchors us in the truth of God's word and promises, fortifying our trust in Him. In moments of doubt or fear, the remembrance of our morning encounters with God serves as a beacon of hope, reminding us of His faithfulness and the unshakable foundation upon which our lives are built. Also, the strength we receive from morning prayer prepares us for spiritual warfare. Armed with the full armor of God, we can stand against the schemes of the enemy, secure in the knowledge that the battle belongs to the Lord. Our morning prayers act as a declaration of our dependence on God, activating His power and protection over our lives. In essence, the strength gained from our daily communion with God is multifaceted, touching every area of our lives. It is a strength that does not boast in its own might, but in the power of the One who promises to be our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. As we continue to prioritize morning prayer, let us do so with the expectation of being filled anew with God's indomitable strength, ready to face whatever the day may hold with confidence and grace. In the scriptures, we find compelling stories of individuals whose lives were profoundly shaped by their commitment to putting prayer first. These biblical characters offer us timeless examples of how starting the day with God can lead to divine guidance, protection, and empowerment in fulfilling God's purposes. Their stories encourage us to make prayer the first action of our day, trusting that like them, we will experience God's guidance, protection, and empowerment to fulfill our divine calling. As we follow in their footsteps, let us remember that our prayers, whether in times of joy, uncertainty, or distress, are always heard by a God who is intimately involved in the details of our lives. Let us first seek God in prayer, laying the foundation of our journey in His presence. This divine attentiveness assures us of His unwavering support and guidance. It beckons us to approach Him with confidence, knowing that each prayer plants the seeds for miracles yet unseen. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I come before you in awe of your majesty and grace. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Your power is infinite, your wisdom beyond understanding, and your love for us everlasting. You are worthy of all honor, all glory, and all praise. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of life and for your mercies that are new every morning. We are thankful for this new day, a fresh opportunity to experience your love, to walk in your ways, and to reflect your light to those around us. Thank you for your faithfulness and for your unfailing love that surrounds me and my loved ones. Lord, I am grateful for your daily provisions and blessings. In your presence, there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Merciful Father, I acknowledge my sins before you and ask for your forgiveness. I also choose to forgive those who have trespassed against me, releasing any bitterness or resentment, for you have called us to live in freedom and peace. Lord. I come to you seeking to start each day in your presence, to lay the foundation of my day upon your word and prayer. Help me to seek you first, trusting that all I need will be added unto me, as you have promised. I ask that you would guide my steps, direct my paths, and fill me with your wisdom. In the name of Jesus, I declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I rebuke and bind every plan of the enemy to disrupt my peace, steal my joy, or derail my purpose. In the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of confusion, fear, 
worry, anxiety, and discouragement. Father, I ask for your protection over me and my loved ones. Shield us from the attacks of the enemy and surround us with your angels. I ask for your healing hand upon us, believing for restoration and strength in our bodies. Lord, bless us in our coming and going, and let your blessings and favor rest upon us as we walk through this day. Let us be vessels of your love and grace to others. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement as we pray for each other, asking for your Holy Spirit to fill us afresh, to empower us to live lives that glorify you. Guide us, Lord, in your wisdom. Protect us in your strength. Heal us in your mercy and bless us with your abundance. We claim victory over every challenge, declare healing over every illness, and give thanks for your provision and protection. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer. I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. Then, I encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.